Everybody, hey, what's happening? Everybody's favorite hour is here. It's time. It's a happy hour. We got uh, we got the BGs staying alive. That's what we're doing in this market, huh? We are staying, staying alive. alive. Man, what a great week. That's it. Man, sorry we're a few minutes late, man. I got caught in some traffic. A little bit late. A little yep. bit late, but uh, I'm sure the Five viewing minutes. audience will... Uh, Forgive us. Mark Zuckerberg called and said, get on the air. Yeah. Mark Z. Mark Z. Texted. We just call him Mr. Z. Uh, man, yeah. So how's your week going? Man, going good. What going good. Up to? Just uh, trying to get some loans done, trying to negotiate some stuff and, uh, you know, navigate changes. Sometimes in, in loans, you've got uh, changes, right? Changes. you got things that change with the borrower, with the property, with... And the bar is always 100% true, well, telling you everything. Well, yeah, but I mean, sometimes these things are out of your control. But listen, we got to make sure we got to adjust and go, right? We still got uh, deadlines right. to meet, closing tables to get to. So, got to make it happen, man. How the kids? They're doing good. They were good back in school. Uh, actually, Brady back into Chelsea. Um, Chelsea High School now, right? Tuesday. Started Tuesday. High yeah. school? Yep. Yeah. And then Hoover wow. City started on Wednesday. So And Boston? Boston College? Boston is, is no, Boston University. University. That'll be starting up early September. Happy, uh, happy hour, Sharon. Yeah, in uh, the CrossFit Games. Oh, Matt, how'd that go? Did you Matt, win? Uh, Matt Fraser repeated a uh, third time in a row he's won. He was using your routine, wasn't he? Unbelievable. And the last couple of events were crazy. But uh, is it, Now, what uh, do they do anything you do on a regular basis? Oh, no. No, Nothing. I couldn't. Uh, there's no way I could handle that. They did one... A handstand walk, like an <laughs> like obstacle across? course. Yeah, on their hands. Amazing. He's a three-time winner. Uh, Tia Toomey is a two-time winner. And then we've got John Colty, was from Birmingham. Really? I, mean, I meant to look him up in, uh, yeah, on Facebook. Yeah, I, I, I don't know who that is. And tell him. I thought we knew everybody. Tell him I was going to give him a shout-out, so I'll have to... Uh, but you just did. Yeah, so John Colty, I'll... <laughs> I'll uh, Say hello. I'll find you later. Absolutely. Well, uh, big week uh, in the real estate market. Zillow making a move in our industry. Man, I tell you, Zillow has um, really done a lot of things in the last few years. Uh, you know, kind of the evolution of this as a lender. Uh, you know, their, their online reviews have been big for three or four years. And, um, you know, trying to, to accumulate those as a lender has, has helped out a good bit for me, I believe. And, you know, they, they've been selling a lot of leads. They, they sell a lot of leads. They uh, I know they have some co-marketing stuff that real estate agents get involved with yep. and lenders help out with, but they also have what's called uh, some long-form leads where they ask the borrower several questions and they sell those to, to lenders. So they've been doing a lot over the past couple of years. Now they've got a couple of new things they're bringing to the market, sounds like, huh? Absolutely. They, they purchased a mortgage company, uh, and they have also, we, we've talked about it a few weeks ago, where Zillow was getting involved in the essentially the flipping game of buying houses. Yeah. And they were going to make this all in one thing. But now, the big thing they always told the real estate agents, hey, guess what? We're never going to get a real estate license. I promise we're not. We're not going to become a brokerage. And guess what they've done in Arizona? They've gone and gotten their real estate brokerage license. But, hey, it's only for their flips. But they're still going to yeah. use agents. Yeah, I'm going to read this. Uh, so they had uh, this was on Monday, August the 6th. The Zillow announced entering into a definitive agreement to acquire Mortgage Lenders of America, LLC. Who are these people? A I've consumer never heard of direct them. mortgage lender. They're based in Overland Park, Kansas. Okay. So I think they're just a mortgage company, so they just got the licensing and the operations probably set up so Zillow could just come in. So would this have been traditionally a mortgage-type company that was like, I guess you could buy a franchise of? Yeah, they probably just bought bought the uh, the name or, or bought the company probably just to, to leverage the licensing and the operations. Um, they're saying to streamline and shorten the home buying process and, and keep, listen to this, for consumers who purchase a home through Zillow Offers. Now, Zillow <laughs> Offers is what you had mentioned. Um, well, they're buying with their venture capital money. Yeah. And it goes on to say, a little over a year ago, Zillow began testing a home selling option for homeowners who want a certain and predictable sale on their timeline. So these homeowners participating markets can request an offer from Zillow, kind of like CarMax, Right, they'll they'll give you a guaranteed price. They'll they'll buy your car for a guarantee. So uh, Zillow will give you a price. Um, you provide their address, answer some questions. They review the home detail the details, the local market conditions. Then they respond with a cash offer within a few with days. their money. 
with their and, money. And but my biggest question on this is, how are they going? I mean, if this thing was meant to be used with this, where in the world were they? Th if if they're not trying to actually get in the game. And, and exactly. cannibalize you guys. And cannibalize everybody, right? Well, no, uh, that was a given. Yeah, because if, <laughs> they're, if, they're, if they're buying houses now, if they're buying and selling houses, and they're providing mortgage options, and they say they're just providing the mortgage option on Zillow offers. But that doesn't make sense. They're not going to have enough revenue to run a mortgage company, I would think, off of just this one little bit. So what I'm saying is, yeah, to your point, I think they are going to be trying to you know, grow that. They have to. It's natural for a business to want to make money, and the only way they're going to make money is yeah. to eliminate referrals out and keep it all in-house. Yeah, and you typically wouldn't go through acquiring <laughs> a company, right, just to do one hey, little Tamara. piece, just for a, a small segment of transactions. And what's interesting, though, is that if they in, indeed were going to just use it amongst these transactions, but I thought a month ago they were talking about their real client in this thing is helping a seller get out of their situation. Exactly. So why would you why would you need a mortgage? Yeah, company? there's no mortgage involved in Zillow offers because they are buying the house. So now they're saying they're going to turn around and sell the house and provide financing on the Zillow offers that they're that they're selling. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, your baby girl just said hi. There you go. Hey Taylor, sick vibes. Sick vibes. I appreciate. Do you know you. what that means? That's Look probably Scott, doesn't mean what Scott you think Stearns it is. likes the cartoon pick. Man. It's a better version of you. Yeah, yeah, How about it kind of is. Uh, now, go. going back to this, though, which is so interesting, and we're going to focus a little bit on the mortgage stuff because it's it's the fascinating piece. Because yeah. I think we had already come to the conclusion that if they could get in and stop and get into the brokerage business, it's easy on a referral basis. If they can make more money, you can get twenty five percent of a deal. That's better than what they're making potentially now if they can scale it. So. You know, and then ultimately, I think the question that a lot of folks have is, how does that affect me as a consumer? If you know, you and I are in the business. That's it. that's a given. But how does that affect the consumer? And that's the ultimately the question. Will they have a? Because one of the things that Zillow's finding is that a lot of their uh, folks that are on their website are millennials, and so the millennials want a one stop shop. Yeah. You know, very similar. To, you know, uh, we got ABC. Hey, there they are. Gary uh, Ballinger. Yeah. Uh, but the, King. The, yeah. The, the, the ultimate question, though, is whether or not Zillow can execute and millennials will care more about a one-stop shop than they will that local provider. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's interesting. I think anytime you deal with that kind of an online presence and this kind of uh, uh, possibly the the model, the business model that they have to employ when they pay their loan officers or whoever's working on the business. Uh, obviously, that's going to factor in in what type of, of care they put into the work, uh, you know, how their sense of urgency, right? Are they, are they incentivizing these people to be excellent, to be top of the market? Are they the best loan originators? And are they going to get hard deals done? Are they going to have the sense of urgency to get business done? We just, I think what you're alluding to is what we found when, when we have clients that have gone to the Quicken Loans, and uh, you're going to hear people that had good experiences with Quicken Loans. But what I'll tell you is the vast, well, the vast majority of my experience, because I'm not going to talk about the market, have been that they were using very new, young people that didn't understand the market. They were overselling and underdelivering. And the closing never happened on time. Well, yeah. If and, it happened. Yes. And, and, same and there's thing a lot here. of reviews. There's plenty of reviews that you can find online about Quicken. Um, so it's easy to look them up, easy to look up that customer experience. But that's typically going to be the um, the advantage that we have is is going to be the knowledge, the skill, the sense of urgency, uh, things like that, that Quicken and these other online lenders are not able to pay the money for. Hey, typically. Courtney. The, but... In in that respect, though, don't you agree, though, that Zillow is uniquely positioned with money, that just like uh, just like Quicken was, to withstand some early gut punches? Well, they yeah, they've already got the name, they've got the ability to market this thing, which is great. Um, I want I want to underline here that says they are putting this mortgage option together. Uh, for the seamless experience for consumers who <laughs> buy Zillow-owned homes. So they say it again, and, and they're sending this out to a lender, myself, as um, who, who I, obviously I do business with Zillow, and uh, they say that 
they had the, the mortgage lenders are a very important piece of their business still. They had 23 <laughs> million course. loan requests in 2017. So they're loving um, you. They're, yeah. they're holding you right here. In this other hand, well, you don't see this other hand is in your back pocket. Yeah. Well, taken yeah. from you. Yeah, and they're 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 coming on the backside to compete with us. It seems like. Well, no, I, I, there's no doubt that. Here's the thing. Ultimately, if if Zillow wins this battle, we didn't do our jobs, the practitioners, right? Because in front of people, face to face, we should be able to come up locally on a very local level ways to completely combat these guys. I mean, I can speak for the National Association of Realtors and people like that did an awful job of, of when we had the opportunity to push off Zillow. Instead, we gave them all the information and Zillow, what did they do? They used us to build their business. It's quite frankly genius. It's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, Netflix, some of these other disruptors that flat out used their own clientele to exactly. build. Exactly, but they did a great job of marketing. They did a good job of uh, putting information out there. Even the Zestimates, although they were terrible in the beginning, right? Awful. They still got a lot of marketing. They still got a lot of traffic, a lot of eyeballs. Went to Zillow to see the Zestimate, even though everybody in the business knew they were terrible. Well, and I think the biggest compliment, and realtors don't want to talk about it, but their website is the best search engine out there for the mass market. Now, you have realtors that have that pay a lot of money that have other ones, all right? But and spend a lot of money. But if you were talking about a general search engine, they're the best. I mean, realtor.com, just in case anybody didn't know, was never truly owned. It was a it was owned uh by uh move move.com, whatever, owned it. Uh and not move on. That would be the political organization. But uh but we had the opportunity and we blew it. Now, your industry, if they don't if they do not respond, what what your industry doesn't have that they have is they have eyeballs that are they're already there. So what do we do about it? We're going to have to, and we'll talk about that in coming weeks, about how this affects the consumer, because I think that's what's most well, important. Well, they've got a lot of market data. You know, if you go on if you go on uh, and look at any realtor's profile, it's got all their recent sales in the last 24 months. All of the uh, 121 reviews that I have, everybody had to sign up and give their information to Zillow. So all the lender reviews, all the realtor reviews are associated with a consumer and their know, profile that's right. that they can now market to. And so. they've and they've linked them. That that's I think what is the biggest thing is they have linked all this data. And you know, I tell you, another big thing coming out of our industry is Wells Fargo. Here they go again. Guess what? This is good. No, it's bad news again. Bad news again. I mean, I mean, dad gum. How much money do these people have? Get this so 8 million dollars has been set aside for them now remember last week what was it? Uh, two two billion. billion. Two billion. This week it's a paltry eight million dollars for improperly foreclosing on four hundred families that were supposed to be going into uh, mortgage modification programs that the government was offering. Wow! And they just didn't do it. it I mean, they were completely asleep at the wheel. Wells Fargo. Why anyone, in my opinion? In case anybody's there, banks with Wells Fargo, it baffles me. Yeah, it, it's amazing. But, you know, even last week we looked at it and they were down 3% with a 3% dividend year to date. <laughs> so you're still breaking even, even all, after all the bad news. From it's, an investment you know, standpoint. Yeah, from but, an investment but, standpoint. I mean, they're one of those two But do you not have options? Uh, have you driven down? We, we, we're here in Birmingham and Highway 280. Have you seen how many banks are here? We Yeah. <laughs> there are options where they won't... Uh, be stealing from you, and I, I still kills me, man. Every time I see that commercial, that basically says, "Hey, we were built in 1873. Now it's 2018. Can you forget about everything in the middle and reestablished, <laughs> reestablished well, 2018? Well, right? We have stopped screwing you. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> what a marketing effort. It is. It is. Oh, poured a bunch of money into it, man. I hope everybody that's watched these every week can go back to our stock picks. And you bought the picks, and then you didn't sell them. Here comes another one. Kit Crushing Earnings we gave about five, nah, probably about ten weeks ago, Carvana. Crushing is that, is earnings CVN? today. CVNA. CVNA, Carvana. So I think 
I think when Collier started talking about it, uh, he was, uh, what was about, what do you say, 26? 27, 26, yep, somewhere in that range. 30, now it's up to 54. 54, I mean, just, here's the thing. It's a big jump. Just buy and hold in this market because, and, and by the way, if you're not in the market, get in the market, and let me tell you why, is that you're going to be missing another run here. It doesn't make necessarily sense. But if, you've, if you're chicken little the whole way through this economy, nothing's making sense either in the Trump administration. I mean that in a good way. You don't know what's next. Yeah. And we don't know what's next for our yeah, and I think and I, and I, I did pull up an article today from, from a guy named Michael Taylor. Okay, it was, it was talking about um, how you can't avoid becoming a millionaire if you start saving early. Um, he wrote the book, uh, The Financial Rules for New College Grads. I think the guy used to sell bonds for uh, Goldman Sachs, I believe. So, been in the financial markets for a long time. He said, if you start in your 20s, with just a couple of reasonable investments, you can't avoid becoming a millionaire. You just can't help it. You can't avoid. Yeah. No. No. So he said um, from from 1970, and I think he got this from Bankrate.com. From 1970 to 2016, the S and P 500 return averaged 10.3 percent a year. Now that assumes reinvesting dividends, but that's not a big deal. Okay, 10.3 percent a year from 1970 to 2016. If you were to save $5 a day at that 10% return over 50 years, that'd be $2.3 million. $2.3 million? Yeah. He said uh, a 20 year old, if a 20 year old invested 5,500 days, $5,500, that would be 600000 by the age 70. <laughs> It just shows you. I mean, wh what are we teaching our kids, right? Uh, you want to. Yeah. Here's the thing. We we go back to what we were talking about. You and I've talked about it. And it, it, at the end of the day, the practicality of sending your kid to community college. I love what Chris Rock said about community college. You know why they call it community college? Because everybody can go. <laughs> that's <laughs> you know? a community. Yeah, that's a, everybody can go. But well, I mean, the thing uh, is, I think the stats show that most millennials are planning on starting to save for retirement when they get in, in their late thirties which is too late. If you start, I mean, now granted, you can catch up and, you know, you can make the best of whenever you start saving, right? Well, and you got to start at some so, man, time, if though. if you start early, that compound interest really starts, really starts kicking in and working. The dividends, you. too. I yeah. mean, it, it make sure, one of the big things you got to make sure is that you have it set to reinvest. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the settings aren't automatic. Uh, no. But now one big thing, Fidelity coming out with some no, two, no load, no fee, no nothing. Uh, uh, ETF, electronic traded funds. Uh, they just track the S&P and something like that. So Fidelity, you know, we're big fans of Schwab, Fidelity, Ameritrade, TD Ameritrade, uh, but also Robinhood, of course, if you're going to trade individual stocks. Um, but, uh, but yeah, but going back to that, though, is, is that, you know, the reason I brought up the college was that we really do set them on a different footing, and you set yourself up on a different footing as a parent. If, if for instance, the child's not on any scholarship, if you can save just two years of that, send them to the community college, what's going to happen? You know, you're going to have a lot more money for yourself in retirement, and they're going to be set better because they're not having to get loans. Yes, absolutely. And if you can cut down on the, the number of loans that uh, ultimately they have to repay, that's that, that could be huge for them. I mean, obviously, it's being massive. in the mortgage business, we pull credit reports and see it every day where people have uh, a number of student loans that they're still paying on. How old's the oldest you've seen? Oh. Person. Man, I don't I don't. In the even, 50s, you think? I don't even know. You know, definitely, I, definitely, definitely, probably. I mean, definitely mid late 40s. Wild. For sure. But I mean, I've seen, you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars. In student loans, which you know, for some some professions, some career trajectories, makes that sense, might, right? Might make sense. But I mean, if you're gonna be a physician, I get it, but just don't be be a specialist, probably. Yeah, because you're gonna crush it. But I think the big deal is just saving early, starting early, uh, in, in those number of years late after you know after ten, fifteen, twenty years, the averages start kicking in, and those uh, all of the money that's been saved and, and multiplying. Just keeps growing. Well, and I, I think, too, when the best advice, you know, we talk about Clark Howard all the time, uh, you know, at Clark.com. Um, you know, he talks about is make sure when you're, when you know, we talked about Fidelity, Schwab, TD Ameritrade, those type brokerages. They make it easy. Don't necessarily bank at the same place you're doing your investing. 
I'm not so sure that they always, because look, again, another Wells Fargo issue. They're going to have to settle some claims because guess what? Their advisors were putting them in the Jelly of the Month Club because they were going to get a free trip to Hawaii, and they're putting yeah. them in investments. It doesn't make sense sometimes, and people, you really got to be careful about what you're doing because it's too easy, actually, to go out yeah. into the market and find good investment. Yeah, and I think uh, that a lot of you know first steps to investing is going to be you know that emergency fund for for sure six months expenses, but then putting maybe ten thousand, twenty thousand into just a safe index fund. Then you're not relying on a commission that somebody's getting paid to move it from uh, Facebook to uh, Snap, right? Because or, or yeah. so, whatever. No, whatever no, no, no. I'm sitting there going, well, I don't you, know about Snap. You know, something something stupid that they're getting paid right. an extra commission on. So you don't have to worry about that if you're just into a generic uh, index fund, like yeah. something tracking. And, and I get it's not that much fun. Yeah, it's uh, not but, exciting. But either he's losing. Yeah. Because individual yeah. stocks, you're going to lose at times. Um, but, uh, yeah. So Robin Phillips joined us and Donnie Stokes. Good to see you guys. All right. Well, we got some real estate stats came out uh, for July of this year. Yeah, and I think it's interesting because last week we did talk about um, the fact that nationally prices had topped out in March and inventory had uh, bottomed out. So inventory was rising, prices were coming down Absolutely. nationally. You know, that may not be true in, in individual markets. I talked to a guy earlier this week in Boston. He said that is not true there. But uh, what do we got? Well, you know, we got the the total number of sales year over year was actually a 6% increase uh, in July of this year. July, to, from July 18 to 17. To 17 six, was a 6% six. Six uh, increase. We also saw an increase in the average sales price by 5%. And also the, the median, which is the dead middle uh, price on real estate here in the Birmingham market, was a 9% increase. But what happened to inventory? Inventory did decrease, so 13% still. Now, is that a larger decrease than what we've been seeing? Well, I, I think there have been year-over-year. Now, these are year-over-year year statistics. Yeah. So there was times earlier in the yeah, year. Yeah, that's a 13% decrease from last July to this July on the inventory. A absolutely. So if you if you look back here with in Jefferson County, uh, you know, just looking back, we, we have been pretty strong in Shelby and pretty consistent in the last four months with the number of, of listings that have come onto the market. You know, you've been averaging about 600 uh, in Shelby County and about 1,200 in Jefferson County. Yeah, and what is interesting here, the residential inventory, this tracks the active listings over 11, 2000, from 2011 to 18. And it does show, let's say uh, January of 16 was 6,300, January 17, 56. January of 18 looks like the low of 49. Yeah, that so was when actually got, got our inventory is up from 4,900 in January to 5,800 and increasing slowly. Slowly. And, and it looks like we, we same percentage wise, because we went from 49 to 58, and last year we went from 56 to about 66. So roughly around the same increase. The question then becomes w w the unknown as we go into the fall. What what's going to happen? You know, we used to be very cyclical. Yeah. So it looks uh, like so it looks like each of the last three years, our inventory has gone back down from uh, August down through the end of the year. I mean, just to remind people, we were over ten thousand listings in May of two thousand and eleven. So we've lost half of our inventory. Yeah. Uh, since two thousand and eleven, and so that's what's creating this very high demand, low inventory environment. And what we're hoping doesn't happen is is that the buyers sour and just say, I'm going to a rental, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Because the buyers are out there. If somebody's looking to sell their house, there's no better time than now because the prices are there. One of the interesting things um, that we saw, look at this number here in our northern region. The number of foreclosure sales, which would be Gardendale, if you're in Gardendale, Fultondale, uh, anywhere Hayden up that way, how many foreclosures did they have? Last zero time. zero i have i mean i have yet to see that yeah. in any area back back in january 17 it was close to 20 in so one month four this is just that one area in one month and just that area now it's down to zero so that's that's definitely good you know and then we look you know here in the uh in the southern region you know we had 16 which is you know obviously a little bit lower than normal but still it is dropping precipitously that's why, you know, a lot of the folks have been looking to get into the flipping game, the rental game, those type things. 
if you're, you're going to have to go more the traditional route than you have in the past of buying a, I don't want to say a retail, but you're more retail price. Yeah, we got, you know, years ago, we got so accustomed to doing foreclosures. It was like so, so frequent that we got, uh, we were doing them all the time and really got to know how to do them, which is kind of weird. We don't see as many financing on foreclosures, uh, not near as many as we were doing years No, past. And, and you know, one of the things that we talk about too is that the, the prices in the southern region, which is where we do a lot of business, which is uh, downtown, south to Chelsea, south to uh, Calera, yeah. that whole kind of corridor that would create a, uh, just kind of a, uh, I guess you would say a triangle back down. I mean, very high. Uh, uh, let's say yeah, the, the prices, average. Yeah, yeah, the price. Average price. Total sales price average is three hundred thousand. Three hundred thirteen. You know, yeah, three hundred thirteen thousand, <laughs> which is up a little bit, not not tremendously. Hey, by the um, way, our friends in Atlanta are going, "Woo, y'all are excited." Yeah, it's down a little bit from May uh -huh. and June, but uh, a b pretty big spike in June for three twenty eight, and then down to three thirteen. Yeah, so, but still holding holding steady, and a lot of that has, is demographic uh, yeah. in terms of income levels and those type yeah. things. Uh, you know, the northern region has been thing, but now the eastern region that, that has Trustville anchoring it, uh, okay. that's always been one that has always baffled us uh, because you had Trustville, but then you had everybody else. And, you know, la last month, they are the one area that, you know, uh, 32 foreclosures uh, out of a total of 400 sales, which what does that make that percentage-wise? You went to Georgia and Tech. What is that? 32 out of 400 is going to be just a little under 10%. See, so, so it's right at eight uh, percent. There we go. We had a little bit of a delay there. Uh, huh, the phone kicked on. I, I must have forgot to put the uh, <laughs> do not disturb. Do on. not disturb on. But yeah, thirty-two uh, in January seventeen fifty-two. I think was the highest number of foreclosure sales in one month in that region. So anyway, the numbers are better. Uh, seems like inventory is coming up a little bit, uh, but we all, but it always tends to drop down. Maybe that's because not as many people put their house in the market. That's right. Uh, yeah. You know, you're seeing a tail off, especially with moms right now. What we're seeing, look, they're only worried about one thing right now, getting back to school. Yeah, and getting in a routine. Yeah, the dad doesn't understand, but uh, well, I we got to get homework. Yeah. We got to get all that stuff lined up. I think up. everything gets a little smoother when the school gets back in and everybody's on a routine. And quite frankly, the, a lot of these uh, uh, ball, uh, football, those things are cranking. Uh, Brady starting, uh, is he well, playing? Yeah, it's just he's playing. He'll be playing basketball hopefully and uh but he hasn't started i don't yeah, guess just working but, uh, out and stuff like that working but, out but the football yeah is definitely back in yeah so i mean they're back so cheerleading all that goes with that so we do see a slowdown here dance uh, oh dance oh, dance yeah. has started <laughs> that never ends yeah, uh i don't I, think dance dance only ends for like maybe a week two, or two. a week oh but they require you two to do weeks stuff in the summer out of 52 they require you to do stuff in the summer you which would've, I've, i would have never known it's crazy ruby we're, we're there every week Rain. We just started back over day, so it's like eight hours a week. Well, oh, y'all did. Oh, yeah. yeah. Man. Goodness. It's, and then, then it's going to be like, oh, we got to practice. And, oh, man. It's just one thing after another. Whew. And then Julia's shoes, her foot won't stop growing. And I'm like, how many pairs of ballet shoes do we have to buy? Yeah. I mean, geez, Louise. Keep I'll running through you. them. Well, well man, if anybody knows John Colty, tell him to look us up and tell him we gave him a shout out. And uh, you guys have a beautiful week. Um, yeah, big stuff. Anything big happening this weekend? Uh, not that I know of. We're off into August, and uh, you, you hitting the links? I'm sure we'll. I, I might try to hit a couple of golf balls, but you need to get I Courtney out there with you. Yeah, I, I hear she's a ringer. Yeah, she's a lefty. So really, yeah, really, she's yeah. Uh, like Phil. Mm -hmm. She's sophisticated like him, so I bet she is good. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we'll see you next week, same time, same place. All right, guys. Y'all have a good week. All right, see y'all. Have a good week.